All right, today I want to talk about um, conversions. Um, in particular, we're headed for converting from degrees, angles measured in degrees to angles measured in radians, or vice versa. But I want to step back a minute and put this in a, in a bigger picture um, because we do conversions all the time and students have probably seen this. Um, so let me point this out. If you had something like um, seven miles and you want to convert that to feet, how do you do that? Right? Well, someone will say, oh, well, you just multiply by 5,280 or do you divide by 5,280? And, and it's like, well, you know, what I think of it as is I think of it as I have to multiply by an exchange rate. I have to exchange my miles for feet. Well, how do I do that? Well, I know that if I have a distance from here to here that happens to be one mile, that same distance measured in feet would be 5,280 feet. That that's the exchange rate, one mile for 5,280 feet. And now when I'm multiplying by that exchange rate, I want to multiply by a fraction, but I want to make sure that I convert in miles to feet. So paying attention to the labels here, to the, to the units, if I put my one mile on the bottom, and I put um, the feet on the top, then the miles cancel out and I'm left with feet. So actually I did multiply by 5,280, whatever that happens to be. I probably should have picked a simpler number. Uh, anyway, so this is 0, 6, uh, 9, uh, 36, 90. I'm going to put a question mark there. I think that's what it is. I just did the multiplication in my head. I could be wrong, but I think that's right. Okay. But the point is, I'm multiplying by a fraction which has on the top and the bottom two numbers, two quantities that represent actually the same length. They're both the same distance, but they're just measured in feet or miles. And I decided to use the miles on the bottom because I wanted to cancel out the miles. If I was going the other way, if I had something like, you know, 492 feet, and I said, how many miles is that? Well, I'm still going to multiply by that fraction, but this time I need the feet on the bottom because I've got to cancel it out so that I'll end up with miles left over. Well, it's still one mile is 5,280 feet, and so I would have to say, well, okay, let me uh, let me divide now. Whoops, 492 divided by 5,280, whatever whatever that number is. This is now feet cancel out, and I'm left with miles. Okay, so now. You know, a similar thing if I was, you know, converting um, feet to inches or let's say miles per hour to feet per second. You know, how fast is, um, you know, 20 miles per hour if I want to convert it to feet per second? Well, I look at that and I say, um, first of all, um, I need to convert miles to feet. Well, that's what we just did above, so my one mile... And again, I'm putting the mile on the bottom to cancel the mile on the top, is 5,280 feet. Then I say um, I've got to convert my hours into, I wanted feet per second, miles per hour, feet per second. So I've got to convert my hour into seconds. And some people can remember 3,600 seconds in an hour. Some people say, oh, wait a minute. For me, it's easier to say one hour is the same as. Uh, 60 minutes and then so my hours cancel out and I'm left with minutes on the bottom so now I gotta convert minutes to seconds but one minute is the same as 60 seconds and you know am I supposed to multiply by 60 am I supposed to divide by 60 well I let the labels figure it out for me I have minutes on the bottom I want to end up with seconds on the bottom so the minutes had better be on the top to cancel out so I get a grand total of 20 times 5,280 divided by 60 times 60 on the bottom. Whatever, uh, you know, whatever that turns out to be, I happen to have my, my calculator handy here. And so I grab my calculator and say, turn it on. And you probably can't see it, so I'll just do it off the side anyway here. So that's 20 times 5,280 divided by 60, 60, 
and I get 29 and a third feet per second. Right. So the conversion is always take a look at your labels and cancel out the one that you want. So from the point of view of converting from degrees to radians, what I know, the nice angle that I know is a straight angle. So if I look at that angle right there, in the old-fashioned degree system, it's 180 degrees. In the newer fangled radian system, it's just a little more than three radians. Uh, it's 3.14159926. We call it pi radians. Right? That's my exchange rate. You give me pi radians, I'll give you 180 degrees. Or if you give me 180 degrees, I'd be happy to hand back pi radians. They're the same value, right? the same angle. So if I'm looking at something like 47 degrees and someone says, hey, please convert that to radians, I say, well, hmm, what I need to do is I need to multiply by an exchange rate. And the exchange rate has to cancel the degrees out. So the degrees has to be on the bottom and the radians have to be on the top. Okay, so my 180 degrees is the same as pi radians, and there's my exchange rate. The degrees will cancel out, and I'm left with radians on the top. 47 pi over 180, which is probably a goofy number, um, but anyway, I'll try it on my calculator. 47 times pi divided by 180, and it looks like whatever, 0.82 something radians, right? There's a lot of decimal places, but it it's 0 0.8203, so it rounds pretty nicely to 0 0.82 radians, right? Going the other direction, if I told you I've got um, seven radians, and I want to convert that to degrees, well, Again, I'm going to multiply by an exchange rate, and it's still the same exchange. It's still, you give me 180 degrees, I'll give you pi radians, or the other way around. Well, you're giving me radians now, so, so let me put my radians on the bottom and end up with degrees on the top, because i got to get those radians to cancel out. Well, the exchange rate, again, is 180 degrees for every pi radians. Right? So, what I have here, the radians cancel out, I've got 7 times 180, divided by pi. This is going to end up in degrees, so let me try that real quick. 7 times 180 divided by pi on my calculator. It says 401.07 degrees. And I look at that and I say, does that make sense to me? It's like, boy, that's more than once around. But remember, once around on the circle was 2 pi radians. And so 2 pi is, well, pi was 3.14, so 2 pi is like 6.28. 7 is bigger than 6.28, so yeah, I did go around more than once. All right, 360 degrees would be all the way around, and then I went a little bit more. So there is that uh, conversion going from degrees to radians or from radians to degrees. When you look at a calculus text, or sorry, a pre-calculus textbook, you're probably going to say, well, if you're going one way, you multiply by pi over 180. If you're going the other way, you multiply by 180 over pi. How do you ever remember which one to do? Well, what I do is I just let the labels tell me what I want to do. The exchange rate is 180 degrees for pi radians. If I need the degrees to cancel out, then you better put the 180 degrees on the bottom. If I'm starting with radians and I want the radians to cancel out, well then I better put the pi radians on the bottom. Let the labels help you. Okay. There's uh, conversions, degrees to radians, radians to degrees. Let me do another one here um, that's um, one of the nice angles. For instance, you know, if you, if you gave me um, 60 degrees and said convert that to radians, Honestly, I wouldn't do this stuff. I had 60 degrees. I know 60 degrees is a really nice angle. It's like, you know, there's 60, 60, 60. They all add up to 180. Well, goodness, you've just taken pi and cut it into three equal pieces, so any one of them is pi divided by three. Now, if I wanted to do the conversion thing like up here, yeah, I could say 60 degrees times my exchange rate. My exchange rate is 180 degrees for every pi radians. 
And again, I've got the 180 on the bottom, so I can cancel it out, be left with radians. And I'm looking at um, 60 times pi over 180, and then I just got to simplify that fraction, right? So this would be the same as 6 pi over 18. Let's see. Oh, 6 goes into 18 three times. So yeah, it does boil down to just pi over uh, 3, right? Just simplifying that fraction. Now, but again, on the nice angles, I probably wouldn't do that. Going the other way, you know, if you said, hey, how about, um, oh, how about, whoops, I've still got the eraser. How about 7 pi over 6 radians? Convert that to degrees. Well, goodness gracious, pi over 6s are nice because I can take my, my, angle of pi, that straight angle, cut it into six equal pieces. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I want seven pi over six, I better go one more. So the angle I want is clear around to there. Well, but that's each one of these things is 180 degrees divided by six. So this is 30 degrees here. So this was an extra 30 degrees past 180. 180 plus 30. I'm looking at, uh, quick, in your head. 210 degrees. There we go. 210 degrees. Okay. The picture shows me pretty well because I know what a pi over 6 is. I don't I don't think of this one again in terms of this multiplication, but I can, right? If I wanted to, I could say 7 pi over 6 times the exchange rate. This is in rads. So, I want um, pi rads on the bottom is equal to 180 degrees. Right, so there we go. Uh, the pi's cancel out, the radians cancel out, so I've got 7 times 180 divided by 6. Oh, that's not a 2, that's a 7, sorry. And so I take out my handy dandy calculator and say 7 times 180 divided by 6. I probably could have canceled something out earlier. And sure enough, my calculator tells me 210 degrees. But I already knew that because I was just pi over 6, 30 degrees past a straight angle. Right. So when it comes to some of the nice angles, using this conversion factor is okay, but you probably have a simpler way of doing it, just looking at the picture and seeing what angle you have and interpreting it in the other way. If you already have degrees, interpret as radians. If you already have radians, interpret as degrees. Anyway, there's some conversions. Um, enjoy doing them.